Hi everyone, this is Evil Graham 93 here. I've got another update for you. Um, as you can see, this is a different angle, and I'm uh, trying out the new uh, webcam on my laptop. So, um, yeah, see how this goes. So, uh, I'll start with the books first of all. And the first proper reading book that I got was Sword of Destiny, which is uh, part two to the Witcher books. Um, I finally got around to reading The Last Wish while I was on holiday. It's a uh, while well, there was a lack of videos, I just uh, come off holiday, so um, I read the last wish while I was on there, and I absolutely enjoyed it. So I uh, got number two, uh, Sword of Destiny. So I don't know why this book is so massive though; it's really tall. But yeah, look forward to reading that. Now next is RoboCop versus the Terminator. Now, as soon as I saw this, I had to pick it up. Um, it's just massive nerd fight really, sci-fi nerd fight, um, I've always wanted to see it happen, Robocop versus the Terminator, so yeah it's a pretty decent read but I thought the ending was a bit slow to be honest, um, it, I enjoyed it though, it was it was alright. Next is Batman Arkham Knight Volume 1, um, this is the graphic novel to the prequel to Ark uh, Arkham Knight, I suppose it's set between um, Arkham Asylum and Arkham Knight, so uh, yeah, this is volume one. Um, not a lot happened in it, to be honest, um, of it, anything exciting, so uh, I'll wait for volume two. Next is Batman Arkham Origins. Um, again, this is the prequel to Arkham Origins. Um, it's strange though this one because you have to keep choosing your path. Like you read to a certain page and it says if you want to go down this path skip to page say 52. If you want to go down this other path skip to page I don't know 24 I don't know. But it's a bit confusing at the moment so I've read half of it and it's still confusing the hell out of me so depending on what path you choose it can either be right or wrong so. Um, next is one that I've just finished reading got it Friday I believe and uh, really enjoyed reading it and it's Batman Hush. Um, I've always liked the character Hush. Um, I mean I've not known him for long, since, well pretty much since <coughs> Arkham Asylum really, um, going around collecting all the Riddler trophies and Hush is one of them so um, I did a bit of background check on Hush so um, yeah then he made his appearance in Arkham Asylum, so uh, yeah, I decided to get this. Um, it was a bit of a disappointment not reading because obviously it's trying to find out who Hush is, and I already knew who Hush was, so um, in that way it was a disappointment. But it was a great read. I really did enjoy this book. Now this one I might have shown last time, but I can't remember if I have or not. And it was big book on the Joker. It's pretty much the history of the Joker. Um, it's got a load of stuff, like loads of uh, interviews with people who created the Joker, um, interviews with Mark Hamill and various other people who played the Joker. And um, yeah, it's everything you need to know about the Joker, really. Um, you've got stuff about Harley Quinn there, you've got stuff about uh, the Joker in the movies, um, everything, really. So um, yeah, it's quite a good book if you're a Joker fan. Next, I will do... We'll have to do the CDs because I didn't think this through. But so um, actually no. In fact, if I have a quick sort out, right, I'll do the games next because there's only two games. Uh, the first one I got is Mad Max for PlayStation Four. Um. Love this game at the moment. Uh, I need to find more time to play it because I've pretty much been going on Dragon Age Inquisition again. So I've got the DLCs for that. So um, and started a new character again on it. So I need to find the time to play this because this is absolutely awesome. I mean, I haven't seen the new Mad Max film yet, but I've heard a lot of people say it was really good. So um, I'm really looking forward to watching that when it comes out on DVD. So um, but if it's anything like this game, I mean, this game is amazing. I absolutely love it. And the last game that I got is 
the Xbox 360 version of Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13. Um, this one, uh, it's enjoyable, but it's really different. Um, it's a lot more to get used to. A new battle system. Um, everything's down to time as well. Where you've got to time things just right. I mean, the whole story's got to do with time. But, um, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. Um, I don't know if I like it or not yet, but... I did manage to get the um, the Una costume and the Cloud costume, so I'm pretty much ruining the uh, the enemies with them at the moment because they're pretty strong costumes to be wearing. But um, yeah, I'd say main story-wise, I've uh, done Noel's story and Cloud as well, saved Cloud, but um, that's as far as I got yet. So yeah, you've only got about five days to finish the story in this and then it's game over so um that's what i mean with time it's it's strange right now i'll do the cds <laughs> gotta retrieve the first pile now <coughs> right they're all pretty much actually heavy metal and alternative really so um first one i got is a album that I've wanted to listen to for ages it's been on my wish list for ages so um finally got round to it and it was Evanescence Fallen so um yeah really glad I got that uh, I used to love a couple of the songs on this album because they're on the um Daredevil movie such as uh Bring Me to Life and My Mortal so others I've heard as well Going Under and um what was the other one uh, Haunted so uh yeah I quite like this album Next is one I've been looking forward to for absolutely ages, ever since I heard it was coming out. Um, I heard it was coming out under a different title though, but um, this title that I got for it is brilliant. The whole the album's brilliant, so um, it's Slayer, Repentless. Um, Slayer are my all-time favourite band. I mean, uh, in my last update, the mega update, you saw that I had the Slayer tattoo done on my arm. So um, yeah, this is the deluxe edition of Repentless. Um, I believe it was originally going to be called the Hannah Mantham, um, but as a bit of a tribute to uh, Jeff Hanneman, so um, yeah. But Repentless is a good um, it, it is a good name for it. Um, I mean, Gary Holt from Exodus, he does a great job taking over Jeff Hanneman. He's never he's not going to be as good as Jeff, but uh, yeah, he's done a really great job on this album. And I mean, I love the way this album opens out for the. Um, uh, deluxe edition because you get the album with this and disc two you get um the making of repentless documentary which i haven't seen yet and uh live at wacken 2014 with slayer but i have watched that and it was brilliant so um yeah i just love the way this album opens out massive crucifix with the discs in these sides but absolutely brilliant fantastic artwork so uh, I'll try and fold it all back up now yeah fantastic album absolutely loved it I've been looking forward to it for ages and I wasn't disappointed so um, brilliant stuff next is Dio Magica um, I think I've only got about two more Dio albums left now. Um, I think they're the last two as well because I've been getting them in order. So uh, this one was pretty good. Did enjoy this, especially the last track, the Magica story. I thought that was brilliant. I mean, it's not really a song; it's just Dio reciting a story. It was, I really enjoyed it. Pretty long though, about 18 minutes long to listen to. Um, next is Black Sabbath, Dehumanizer. And I believe this was the last album that Dio did with Black Sabbath. So that means I've got all three of these now from his time in Sabbath. So um, it's just picking up the others now, but I'm not too fussed about getting them, to be honest. Um, yeah, this one was all right. Loving the artwork as well. I feel like a Terminator Grim Reaper. Next is Motorhead, March or Die. Um, this one was all right. 
I mainly got this one because I'm a bit of a completist and I want all the Motorhead albums. And because it's got Hellraiser on this, and I mean, I don't know what version is better, the Motorhead version of Hellraiser or the Ozzy Osbourne version of Hellraiser. I mean, um, Ozzy help, helps co-write that song with Lemmy, so um, they both got a co uh, version of it on their album. So uh, Next is Motorhead Black Magic, the, uh, the newest album. Absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Um, I don't know if it was as better as Aftershock though, but it was still pretty good. Really enjoyed it. Next is one, as you can see by the shirt that I'm wearing, it's Iron Maiden, The Book of Souls. Um, this was absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed this one. Um, and I'm not really a massive fan of Iron Maiden's latest work. I mean, I didn't really like The Final Frontier at all. Um, but yeah, this one was absolutely brilliant. I mean, songs. Well, the Book of Souls was a brilliant song. This, and so is Empire of the Clouds. I mean, that's the longest Iron Maiden song to date yet. Yeah, that's about eighteen minutes long as well. So it beats uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by about five minutes. So uh, brilliant stuff. Next is Iron Maiden, The X Factor. Um, again, like I say, I'm a bit of a completist. So I wanted to get all the Iron Maiden albums. So. Uh, this is one that I needed, the X Factor, and I wasn't impressed at all by it. I think it's because the absence of Bruce in this, but um, I don't know. I didn't enjoy it. Next is Iron Maiden Virtual Eleven. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, again, this was another one that I wasn't too fussed with. Um, again, I think it's because of the absence of Bruce, so um, I don't know. Right, pile number two. In fact, I can put pile number three on as well now. Next is Iron Maiden, Dance of Death. Um, thankfully, Bruce is back in this, but again, it wasn't very good. I mean, everyone goes on about how bad this art cover is. Shocking stuff, but um, not too bad, but not too good. Better than the last two, anyway. Uh, next is one that I really like the cover art on, and it's Iron Maiden, A Matter of Life and Death. Now, this was a fantastic album as well. Um, you know, the, the uh, resurrection, oh, reincarnation, sorry, of Benjamin Brigg. I mean, that's a brilliant song, but a clear artwork. Absolutely fantastic. And then, uh, that's all of the studio albums now I've got of Iron Maiden, so I'm um, really pleased with that. It's just live albums and stuff to get. Um, <clears throat> next is Iron Maiden Somewhere uh, Back in Time uh, the first compilation album well not the first but it's uh, between the best of 1980 and 1989 so you've got stuff like um, Ace is High uh, The Trooper, uh, Can I Play With Madness so um, I've got this to go in my car really I mean that's the only reason why I buy compilation albums now. If I haven't already got them on the al got songs on the album, I will buy a compilation album for my car. So um, yeah, that'll go with my God bless Ozzy Osbourne and um, not God bless Ozzy Osbourne, Memoirs of a Madman. So um, uh, next is another Iron Maiden compilation. It's from uh, from Fear to Eternity. So you, you got stuff like uh, that's on um, Fear of the Dark right up to. Uh, Final Frontier on this, so again, it's another one that's going to go in the car. Again, fantastic artwork. Next is Corn debut album. I uh, thought I really need to get more into Corn. Um, I did used to like them a couple of years back, but I never. I only had their greatest hits album, so um, I wanted to check more of their stuff out. So there's the debut album. It was pretty good. Um, next is Corn Issues. Um, I wasn't too fussed on this one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just alright. I have to admit, I'm not a massive Corn fan anymore. I'm just trying to get into them a bit more. And plus, I'm running out of bands to think of to get CDs. So, um, next is Follow the Leader, the one that everyone likes. And I have to admit, again, I was a bit disappointed. I mean, it's got stuff like Freak on the Leash here. But um, I'll tell you, that's the only decent song on this, so uh, 
that's just my opinion. I know people like that album quite a lot. And then we have Corn See You on the Other Side. Um, again, fantastic album artwork. Uh, yeah, it's got a couple of songs on this I like. Coming Undone. It's probably one of my favourite Corn album, uh, Corn songs even. And Twisted Transistor. So um, yeah, it's just all right. Now these last four for music. Um, one of them I'm pretty sure I haven't shown, but the other three I might have shown in the Mega Update. I just can't remember. I thought I'd missed them out. But um, yeah, so we've got 30 Seconds to Mars, um, debut album. Uh, I'm a massive fan of 30 Seconds to Mars now. I didn't really like them first of all, but um, I don't know. I was just, for some reason one day I saw them on, um, I think it was Kerrang! that they was on. So uh, I watched it and I actually quite enjoyed some of their music, so I decided to get their albums. Um, I mean, my favourite one on this one is Oblivion, and that's one of my all-time favourite songs of theirs. So, um, next is 30 Seconds to Mars, A Beautiful Lie. Um, this is probably my favourite album of theirs. You know, it's got stuff like uh, The Kill and what have you. And From Yesterday. Now, From Yesterday is my all-time favourite song of theirs. Um, hands down, I don't know why, but absolutely brilliant stuff. <coughs> uh, next is... 30 Seconds to Mars, This Is War. Um, this was quite a popular album when it came out, I think. Um, I was forever hearing tracks of it on the radio. Um, yeah, yeah, you got stuff. This Is War, Kings and Queens, um, Hurricane. Hurricane's a good song, I did enjoy that. Um, yeah. And then the last CD is... I'm pretty sure I didn't show this one, because uh, I've got this one... Last at home, I think it's the last 30 Seconds to Mars album that they've done so far, and it's um, Love, Lust, Faith and Dreams. Um, this one was alright, but um, again, there's only, I think, one song on this that I did really enjoy, and it was um, Up in the Air. Right, finally on to the films. Uh, Going to start with the non-horrors first. I'll get them into order. Um... I'm hoping that I haven't missed any DVDs or films out here, because I'm a bit short on them, so um, I'm just having a quick scan round, but I think that this will be it for this update, cause it must be, I can't see them anymore. Right, first one is Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, I was always meaning to see this at the cinema, but I never got round to it, and I was, uh, I'm going to know whether to see it or not, because... I'm not really a massive fan of the first Avengers movie. I mean, it was okay to watch, but I don't know. It's just something about it I didn't like. So, um, and I've recently been thinking that most of these new Marvel ones haven't been as good as everyone was saying they were. They're a bit crap. But, um, yeah, I was uh, pleasantly surprised with this one. I did really enjoy it. Um, I mean, I quite liked Ultron before to start, and I was wondering what it'd be like in a movie. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty decent movie. I did enjoy it. Especially the old uh, Hulkbuster Iron Man scene. That was brilliant. Um, it was nice to see the vision in this as well. So, um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing Ant-Man as well. That was another one that I was thinking that I didn't, I'm in an iron about. But, you know, it does look pretty good, actually. So um, I might have to bite my words there. Oh, excuse me. Um... Next is one I was debating whether to put in the horror category or not, and I decided against it. And you'll see what I mean when I, um when I show it, and it is monsters. <laughs> now, ages ago when this first came out, I think I was still in school doing my um, sixth form, and I went into Tesco's and saw it, and I was debating whether to get it or not. I was I had a friend with me, and I was. Said, oh yeah, this looks really good from the trailers, and some random bloke appeared behind me, and he said, "No, put that down, put it back. It's crap. Don't watch it. There's hardly any monsters in it." So uh, I listened to him. Years later, I've got it, just because I'm curious about, still curious about the film. Still haven't watched it. I uh, watched it, and he was right. It is crap. Um, really didn't like it. I mean, it's trying to copy the whole um, Cloverfield sort of effect, but it doesn't work in this. Yes, it may have Whitney Abel in it. Yes, she was the girl from 
Uh, all the boys love Mandy Lane. And yes, she is quite fit, but this film is terrible. Really boring. So with that, I decided to get the sequel as well, Monsters Dark Continent, which had only just come out, I think. Now, I have to admit, it was better than the first one. However, it was still pretty boring. I mean... I don't know. I, I didn't. It, I didn't really like it. I mean, it's probably. It, I have to admit, it was better than the first film. A little bit more action packed, but again, there's hardly any monsters in it. I mean, you do see them a lot more than the first movie, but this is more of a war film and a pretty bad war film at that. I have to say, didn't enjoy it. All right, finally with the horrors. <coughs> um, first one I may have shown last time. But uh, if I didn't, I'll just show it again. There's no problem there. And it is um, a town that dreaded sundown. Um, yes, I have this again. I did get the Scream Factory version. But um, I told my mum about this film and she was interested in watching it. But uh, the version I already had, the Scream Factory one, was uh, Region 1. And the only Region 1 player that, DVD player that I got is upstairs in my room. So um, I wasn't really keen on unplugging all the DVD player, taking it downstairs just to watch one film to bring it back upstairs. So um, I thought the hell with it and I'll get this Region 2 version released by Eureka Classics, which I've never heard of them before. So um, hopefully they're doing pretty good stuff. So yeah, we got the DVD and Blu-ray there of the Town of the Dreaded Sundown. I mean, you know, you either like it or hate it with that movie. I, I quite like it. And the new one, to be fair, the new one was pretty good. Um... Next is one I've been waiting ages for. I've had it on pre-order for absolutely ages and they kept moving the uh, release date back and it kept annoying me, but I finally got it now and it's <clears throat> the Arrow release of Eaten Alive. Now, I really like this movie. Ever since I first seen it, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, uh, it was, I, I don't know. It was a really crazy movie, but everyone knows this movie now. All the horror fans know this movie. But, um, again, like I said, it's the only... I, that's why Arrow's going down in my books because they're bringing out release dates for this movie uh, for these movies. I mean, this one was meant to come out in March, I believe, and they just kept putting it back, putting it back, and it's finally come out now. So, um, but I had this rant in the mega update when I got Madman. So, uh, yeah, I'm not very impressed with them keep doing that. I mean, you either make a release date and stick to it, or just you know don't bother releasing the movie at all. So. Um, Next one again, I was pleasantly surprised while watching it because I thought it was going to be really cheap and nasty. It's Into the Grizzly Maze. Now, the main thing that got me with this was, um, one, that I only have one Killer Bear movie and I keep looking out for new ones. Um, and the one I already had was, I think it's just called Bear and it was terrible, but, uh, the main bit that got me was the cast and this. You've got Thomas Jane, which I quite like him anyway. He was, um, in Deep Blue Sea and The Punisher, so, um, and I, I think that Punisher movie was pretty good, I still say it was pretty good, I mean, a lot of people don't like that one, but I thought it was fantastic, to be honest, but, um, I think Thomas Jane stars is a brilliant Punisher, but anyway, getting back to this, I saw him on this, and because he was in Deep Blue Sea, another great creature feature movie, I thought I'd give it a try, and you got, um, Billy Bob Thornton in this as well, so, you know, I'll give it, a, I thought I'd give it a try, and, um, I did quite like this one, actually. I mean, uh, yeah, for the most part, they got real footage of the bear. But, um, when the bear attacks, it is CGI, but it is pretty good CGI. Um, pretty good attempt at making it. And it's nice and gory as well. I love this one, actually. It's pretty good. Um, and lastly, for the update, it's a random blind buy. Actually, it's my dad got, and um, I didn't even know they was making this, but... Uh, He's a massive fan of this movie, so, um, yeah, he decides to get it, and it's from Dust Till Dawn, season one. Like I said, he's a massive fan of the movies, so, uh, and I quite like the first one. I'm not too keen on the sequels, but the first one is pretty good. Um, it, <clears throat> it's one of my favourite vampire movies, so, um, yeah, I didn't even know they was making this series, and my dad didn't either, so he picked it up, and as you can see, you know, he got it for 13 quid or 12.99 in HMV, so um, I just have to see what this is like. It's probably going to be terrible, but uh, you know, we'll give it a go anyway. So, alright, that's it for the update. Thanks for watching, thanks for subbing if you have, and I'll see you all later. Bye.